Hi everyone, we're here today with Matthew Loon, one of my favorite storytellers ever. Hi Matthew. Wow, well thank you. Great introduction, right? It's, I'm happy to be here. <laughs> so on a more serious note, storytelling, yes. all the rage these days, right? Everybody wants to know how to do it. Mm -hmm. Some people are better than others. Mm -hmm. What in your opinion makes a great storyteller? Well, first off, we are all storytellers. Mm -hmm. When we're kids, all those kids are storytellers, they're writers, they're actors, they're musicians, and then I think it's kind of junior high, right? <laughs> it's, it's, it's growing up and it's the fear of failure. It's the fear of mm -hmm. I'm going to embarrass myself. And unfortunately, a lot of kids move away from being creative. So we're all storytellers. Mm -hmm. Some of the things that I recommend to people is be present. Mm -hmm. Remember the moments that are happening during the day. Record them down. Write them down in a journal or a diary. These moments. Because storytelling is basically recalling those moments and removing the boring parts and then having some creative license to enhance them. Mm -hmm. Practice, right? Rehearsing, mm -hmm. getting up there and sharing those, those personal or professional moments of your life. That's how you become a better storyteller. Interesting. Now, I want to play devil's advocate. Sure. Because this works great, I think, in the more storytelling for movies or kids way. Mm -hmm. When you do storytelling and you take it into the B2B environment, for example, yes. it becomes a little more difficult. Especially if you have a product that's like not very inspiring. Right. Any tips for that kind of person that's struggling with that? So what I would say is, even with the most driest analytical information, you can still enhance it with just a little bit of storytelling. Even if you add an analogy, an anecdote, mm -hmm. that's just maybe 10% of your entire pitch. Mm -hmm. That one little story could be the tipping point for people to decide to go with you or to go with someone else. Because when you share a story, you're opening up your life a little bit mm -hmm. to someone. They make a connection with you. You're a real person. You're not just a salesperson or a marketing person. You make the information more memorable, and you end up, maybe if you do it really well, making people laugh or maybe get a little emotional. Mm -hmm. You impact them. What I always suggest for people in business is to toggle back and forth between the story and the content. Look at your talk, your presentation, your pitch, Say, where could I add a little bit of a story, a little bit of uh, an anecdote, mm -hmm. and then when I can switch back to the information. Right. So it always depends on who you're speaking to, your audience. But even in business, you can do a better job communicating by adding in a little bit of a story. Right. Yeah. Now, there's inspiration in stories. Mm-hmm. Obviously, you have a wild imagination and inspiration mm -hmm. in your lifetime. Where do you these days still get it from as an adult? I would say that it helps uh, being a, a father of mm -hmm. three kids. I get to see my life. You know, I get to see the world through their eyes. Yeah. And also, I'm, I'm very conscious about recalling moments that... Um, that have happened to me mm. in the past, to be able to remember these small story moments. For example, just even asking yourself, do you remember the first car that you ever bought mm. or were given? Now all of a sudden you're thinking about right, it. Right. What color was the car? Green. Green. Remembering things like your very first job, maybe it was in high school. Mm -hmm. Do you remember your very first job? Yeah, I worked in a in a greenhouse doing tomato plants. And here's a good story. Yes. I work with this gentleman, this dude, because okay. we were younger, let me talk, call him dude. And he had a boom box, this is also in the 80s. Okay. And he would play ACDC. And to this day, I remember all the lyrics to every ACDC song. Now let me ask you something. When was the last time you thought about that moment? Yeah. A long time ago, right? You see, we have all of these stories mm -hmm. that are kind of cobwebbed up in right. our head. We just need to be prompted to get them out. And then the awesome thing is that when you go through these moments that have happened to you and you write it down, just like on one page, mm -hmm. you'll realize that there's a theme or a takeaway mm -hmm. 
with that story. And then the brilliant thing in business is when then you can say to yourself, wow, that's the first time I really learned the value of teamwork or that working hard equals success mm -hmm. or that I was juggling way too much with my schedule. I was going to school, I was working for boombox guy and I was helping my parents. I was so over leveraged right. that I did bad on everything. Mm. Now see, those personal moments can be used as anecdotes to be able to bridge the gap between business and heart. Right. And all of a sudden, now you're sharing the message of don't over leverage. Right. How important teamwork is and people remember it. Right. They remember you, because they remember the story, and you kept an audience on the edge of their seats wanting to know mm -hmm. what happened. Now I want to find the most boring security <laughs> product and write a great story about it. Hey, that's right. <laughs> I tell you, I work with so many different companies from, from shoe companies mm -hmm. to tech companies to the banking industry to you just name it, and everybody can use storytelling to be right. a better communicator right. and better authentic communicator. Right. So I would say, for the people listening out there, really go through some of those. What was your first car, your first job, your first kiss? Mm -hmm. What was it like when you had a kid? Right. You know, um, you're gonna find that you are a very good storyteller. You just need a little bit of help to be prompted to recall those moments. Those are great, that's great advice. I really appreciate that. One final question. The sure. favorite project you ever worked on? Well, I would say the favorite project I ever worked on was the very first film I ever worked on, which was Toy Story. You know, we always remember our, our those, oh, those first moments. Yeah. And uh, just like that first date, mm -hmm. that was my first movie. You know, I was in my early 20s. Um, I was new to, to film, mm -hmm. and I worked on that film for three years. Wow. I was one of the first 12 animators on. I mean, there were so many ups and downs mm -hmm. to that thing. But it was like I went three years to film school, and it was so memorable, and it makes me so happy now, years later, uh, like almost 25 years later, I think, that those characters have still really, that are still having an impact on people that they're kind of like the Mickey Mouse right. and the Donald and Goofy of our time, you right. know, with the Woody and Buzz and Jesse and that whole Toy Story thing. So I'm very grateful for worked on that film. It's definitely my favorite film to have worked on. I, I still have one more question. Okay, I'm, tell me. Because you were asking me about first. So yes. do you remember the first time that movie played in a movie theater and what you were doing and where you saw it? Well, I was fortunate enough when I finally got to sit down and watch it with the rest of the team mm -hmm. at Pixar, uh, and you can bring somebody, I brought my dad. Oh. My dad, who was the guy who took me to see Star Wars when I was five years old in 1977, the guy who took me to see Poltergeist and I couldn't sleep for weeks, <laughs> but took me to see all of the great animated films, I had to bring him. He's always been my movie buddy. Right. So that was, Definitely a memorable moment for both of us. Yeah. Yeah. Well, thank you so much for being here. My I really pleasure. Thank this. you. I hope I see you again. Auf Wiedersehen. Auf Wiedersehen.